back to turning up on Thursdays. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So I did take a poll on my Twitter. Um, I'm trying to get my schedule back on track. Thank you to you guys that have been asking about my mom, how she's been doing after her surgery. She's doing fantastical, her recovery. She got like pneumonia right after her surgery, so that was a lot of fun, but she's doing so much better. Uh, she now has her dog back, so progress is being made. I am getting better from the cold that I had. I still got some mocos going on, but that's okay. We can work through it. I took a poll on my Twitter in regards to do you guys want to see story times like back in the OG days on Thursdays or do you prefer them on Fridays? And according to the results and according to you guys voting, you guys would like to go back to Thursday uploads for story times. So that is what we are doing today. I hope you guys are ready and down to hear a story time with me. Thank you guys so much for all of your patience and love and support. I really appreciate appreciate it. The leaking, just a little, just a little. Um, today's story time is going to be a little bit messy, okay? And I'm going to be spilling some tea, but I have not spoken to this person in legit, like, I mean, it's been almost 10 years, so I think we're good. This couple is no longer together, so it's not like I'm doing any damage anyways. Now, this will be in addition to my Wingman Chronicles. I haven't added to that series here on my channel in a while. I've been more focused on Robert's funky ass and Ariel's funky ass or whatever. It does have to do with Robert and Heather. They're both in this story, so, you know, everybody's uniting. As usual, before we get into today's story time, today's glamour shot of the day is my glamorous ass glamour. Amazon. Anna, she like completely blew everyone away on Twitter with her beauty and like this amazing glamour shot right here. Okay, thank you so much. She just really supported me through everything that's been going on and I really, really appreciate all of your love and support, Anna, and everyone that's just been loving me and supporting me throughout this entire journey. I really, really appreciate you guys. You guys know that I would not be here without you and I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get into this story time. So this story time takes place when I was 17 years old. I was already with Robert's funky ass. This story has to do with two friends that I don't believe I've mentioned here on my channel before. So we're going to name them. They were a couple and we will name the guy. We will name him Will. And then we'll name his girlfriend like Sandra. So Will and Sandra, okay? They were one of those couples in high school that like stayed together for freaking ever. They had been together since like 7th or 8th grade. They did go to my 4th and final high school with me. And Will was one of Robert's really really, really good friends. So obviously he wasn't like his best friend, but he was like right up there with his best friend. He was constantly over at Robert's funky ass's house. They would like play basketball, play video games together. Actually, the day that I had found out that Robert's funky ass was like doing some crazy shit with that girl that was going to come pick him up, like the whole reason why I left him, that day Will was actually at the house. Like they had been playing video games downstairs in the basement together when I found that text message. So like he saw me go all kinds of cray and like start throwing shit and stuff so he was there <laughs> he got to see like that other side of me but anyways when I got with Robert you know of course when you get with a new guy you start getting to know their friends and like their little circle of people so I got to know Will and in turn I got to know Sandra and so sometimes not very often it was pretty rare but there were some times that she and I would hang out together like during our lunch period or whatever and I got to know her a little bit I didn't start getting to know her a whole lot until like summer and after we were out of high school she and I had one class together and she was pretty quiet as well she was just really chill um, I know that she came from a single parent home she had a single mom and she just kind of she basically raised herself from what I knew about her and just talking to her she was basically raising herself like her mom was hardly ever home and so she just kind of did whatever she wanted to do she had this relationship with Will for like years and years and and that was basically that. She was the kind of girl that like she had like a ton of tattoos already. She had like half sleeves done already and like she did her own thing. She was just always different. She didn't have a whole lot of friends in school. She wasn't there to make friends. She just didn't give a shit. And that's kind of what I liked about her was that she was like, I don't really care what everybody else is doing around here. Like I got my mans, like I got my own life. I'm not here to make friends. I, I'm just here to like get my credits and graduate and peace out. So I started hanging out with her a little bit more, right? One thing about Sandra and Will was that they weren't like super lovey-dovey, like they didn't really hold hands a whole lot. 
and they just were not that type of couple. I feel like they were just together for so long at this point that they were just like, you know, they were like, hey, what's up to each other? And you knew that they were together, but they weren't like stupid. They didn't have like PDA or anything like that, right? This story begins when I was still a junior in high school, and so was Sandra, and then both of the boys were seniors. But one day came around, and she and I decided to hang out, and there was like testing going on. So like, it, I remember that it wasn't a normal day. Like there was like testing, and like the school schedule was really weird and off. And so somehow, for some reason, she and I were hanging out in the courtyard and it's like this middle area of the school outside and there's like benches and stuff out there. We're like sitting on this bench and we were waiting for something like we didn't have class. I think we had a, an off period together or something and we were like waiting for our next class and we just weren't doing anything, right? I found out that she and her mom literally lived a block away from Robert's funky ass, right? Now at this time, more of my rebellious side was coming out. I was not listening to my mom as much as I used to. I was like over it. This was my fourth high school. Like I was not, like I felt like, you know what? I'm close enough to be an adult to start making my own decisions. And like, I'm gonna start telling more stories about like my rebellious stage. And this was like that time. So during this conversation, she and I started making plans about Robert and I going to chill at her house with Will and her. Keep in mind, her mom was never home. Like honestly, Robert's mom was never home and her mom was never home. Like these kids like legit had no parental guidance at all, right? So she was like, yeah, you guys can come over anytime. Like, I don't know why Will always goes to Robert's house. Like, I don't know why we've never even thought about this, but you guys are more than welcome to come over. I have the whole house to myself, whatever, whatever, right? So I was like, hell yeah, in time I just wanted to chill with everybody, right? So we made these plans, we told the boys, and that was going to be that. So that weekend came around, and that was the first time that Robert and I had gone over to her house. And you guys, it was like this big, you know, two-story home, and she had one little sister, and she would take care of her little sister. I want to say her little sister was like eight or nine years old, and um, but it was just her little sister and her in the house. There was nobody else there. She took care of the house. She would take care of like all of the responsibilities. She got her sister ready in the morning, and her mom, just like Robert's mom, had a boyfriend that she was constantly going off with. Like, you know, she was hardly ever home, and I, I kind of felt bad for her because, like, you know, there was nobody there to help her, right? We used to go over there, you guys, and, like, chill all day, and we would play video games, and, like, we'd watch movies, and, like, we'd, like, we would just hang out all day and just do whatever the hell we wanted, right? It was so much fun, and I was starting to feel the sense of freedom that I had never felt before, number one. And number two, I was surrounding myself with teenagers that legitimately did not have parents all up their ass. And so, like, I had never seen anything like this, and so I started to believe this is normal. What's happening here and their parents not being around is normal, and my mom is just crazy. It just started fueling my rebellious behavior, and I was like, um, no. Like, I'm not about to be, you know, being told what to do by my parents parent and like they just get to run around and do whatever they want like obviously we're grown enough to not be dumb like we're just hanging out right <laughs> one day came around and I had lied to my mom and I had a friend that used to ride my bus to school and she was like a cheerleader and I, I I'm not gonna give her a name because she doesn't have like a huge part in the story but anyways I she literally lived right across the street from me and sometimes I used to spend the night at her house Anyways, I had lied to my mom and I told her that I was going to spend the night at my friend's house and I didn't. I ended up going to Robert's house and then we both went to Will and Sandra's house and we spent the night over there. Guys, I swear on everything, nothing like crazy ever happened when I would spend the night over there. We would legit all spend the night like she had like this den and these huge sectional couches and we would all sleep there like in the same room so like there was no like crazy shit going on okay not while I was there I had gone over there I had my bag or whatever and we it was the same thing like we had ordered pizza you know we were playing video games and I just remember it was a really chill night and I was just enjoying my freedom right and that night, something happened between Will and Sander that had never happened before, and that was they got into a fight. 
And when I tell you guys, out of all the times that we had hung out with them at school, after school, at the house, whatever, they never fought, ever. They just were not that type of couple. I heard them like arguing in the kitchen, right? And Robert and I kind of just like wanted to mind our own business. Like we were sitting on the couch in the den, but like the kitchen was like up these few stairs, like right there. So you could hear everything. So like they're fighting and me and Robert are just like, oh shit, like we don't want to get in the middle of it, right? But Sandra like just takes off and she just runs and she runs down into the den and her room was down there off to the side and there was a room and then a bathroom right next to it and she ran right into the bathroom, right? She slams the door and I'm like, oh my God, like what do we do? There's nothing more like uncomfortable than being around your friends and like they're together and they're fighting and like you just don't know what the hell to do, right? Here comes Will he runs after her he's banging on the bathroom door Sandra get out just talk to me why are you acting like this you're being crazy right and he's like seriously so upset and like we don't know what they're fighting about but it got really really bad so I kind of like tapped Robert and I was like hey I was like go talk to him I was like she's just not ready to talk about it right now I don't know what they're fighting about like but maybe you can calm him down so Robert had gotten up and he was like hey man he was like why don't you and I just like go for a walk and Will, he was just like so mad. He was like, I don't know why she's acting like that. Like, I didn't even say anything or whatever. And Robert was like, hey, it's okay. Just give her some time. Give her some space. Why don't you and I just go take a walk and like cool off for a second. And then you guys can come back and maybe talk about it. And so Robert and Will took off and they took off out of the front door and they were literally going to take a walk around the block right while they were gone you know i kind of sat on the couch for a few minutes and i could hear sandra you guys just crying you know like that from the depths of your soul type of crying and so i could not just like just sit there and not try to help her like at this point in time like i knew her but like she and i weren't best friends so like but i can't just hear her crying like that and not do anything so like I go up to the bathroom door and I kind of like knock real softly and I'm like, hey, Sandra, are you okay? Like, do you need anything? And she was like, yeah, I'm fine. And she goes, is Will still here? And I said, no. And she was like, where did he go? And I told her, you know, he just went for a walk to go cool down with Robert. And like three or four minutes passed and then finally she unlocked the door and she came out. And like, you guys, her face was just red and swollen and she was just like crying. And she just looked at me and the minute that she looked at me, she just busted out in tears again. And like, I was like, oh my God, like what is happening? And so of course, you know, I didn't know her that well, but it was like one of those moments where you're like, oh my God, like you need a hug kind of thing. So I just hugged her and she just like literally fell into my arms and was just crying and crying and crying. So I legitimately just sat there and hugged her and I was like, Sandra, it's gonna be okay, it's fine, you're gonna be okay. And she was like, no, it's not. She was like, I really think I got myself into some shit. I started walking her and like leading her over to the couch. So I sit her down on the couch and I get her a glass of water and I'm like, hey, you wanna talk about it? And she just kind of sat there and she wouldn't answer me. She just kept crying and then out of nowhere, she was like, I'm pregnant. And I was like, oh okay okay all right no it's fine it's okay um i was like when did you find out and she was like i literally just found out this morning and i was like there's a fly in here oh my god is that what you and will are fighting about and she goes no and i was like what do you mean and she goes will doesn't know and i was like so what are you guys fighting about and she was like we're fighting about stupid stuff. She was like, but we've just been agitated with each other. She was like, and I don't know how to tell him and I'm really nervous. She was like, and I didn't get around to telling him and we just started fighting and now I, I don't feel like I'm making the right decision. And I was like, we're fighting about something completely different. But like the whole time they were fighting, she just found out that she was pregnant. She was like, you know, just the way he's acting and like today of all days we get into a fight and like, I don't know if I want to tell him. I don't know if I want to keep the baby. So she's like reeling right now. She's like freaking out. And I was like, hold on, wait a minute. So I was like, don't make any decisions right now. I was like, it's okay to be freaked out. Like, you know, I was like, you just found out. We start talking about it and she's, you know, just telling me everything, how she found out, you know, she's feeling really sick or whatever. And I was like, you know, ultimately this is your decision, love. And she was like, I don't know what I want. She was like, I don't know if we're ready to have a baby. And like, you know, the standard things that, you know, a 
teenage girl is worried about when they find out that they're pregnant. And you know, we're both 17 and so I don't really know how to advise her. I don't know how to make her feel better. Like this is scary for me too. Like I don't know what to say. All I can do is just be there for her. And I was just like, you know, just take your time. And I was like, you know, I was like, do you think he's going to be mad? And she's like, no, I don't think she, he's going to be mad. He, she was like, but I just don't feel like we're ready to have a baby right now. She was like, you know, I haven't even graduated. He's just about to graduate. She was like, I don't have a job. She was like, he only has a part-time job. She was like, my mom is never here. Okay. So fast forward like five more minutes and the front door opens and Robert and Will walk in. And I was like, you know, are you ready to have this conversation with him? And she was like, no, not right now. And I was like, okay. So, you know, she starts wiping her face or whatever. And we just shut down the conversation completely because she's not ready to tell him. And like, I, I am in no place to be telling her what to do and how to handle this, right? Will came and he like sat down next to her and he was like, you know, can we talk? And she was like, yeah. So they went into her room together and like shut the door. So it was just Robert and I out in the living room by ourselves. And I was like, oh my God, like I think that we should leave. And I knew that I couldn't tell Robert because like it just wasn't my place. I didn't want Robert to like, you know, spill the tea before she even told Will. Like absolutely not. Robert told me that Will had told him that she was just acting, you know, irate and that she was just being crazy and like he didn't understand why. And so I was like, oh my God, if you only knew. So we're just like in the middle of this teenage drama, right? I don't know where you guys, we just hear... We hear the sound of sex happening in the other room. It was pretty evident that they had made up and like, they were just like, making up. We left and we left the house and we went back to his house and I had invited Heather over and like we spent the rest of our day like with our other friends. For that night, Will had texted Robert and was like, hey, I'm sorry, like we made up or whatever. You know, tomorrow, if you and Nikki can come by, he was like, we have some huge news for you guys. So I was like, oh my God, I know exactly what it is. I bet you money, she told him. But like, I had to act like I was surprised because neither one of the boys knew that she had told me first. So now, at this point, you know, we just find out that our friends are pregnant and they're gonna keep this baby and they're gonna go on this journey together. Later on that month, both of the boys graduated and Robert, you know, was going to a community college and Will decided to take a year off or whatever to work full time because he's expecting a baby now, right? Now, here's the kicker, okay? She was super nervous to tell her mom that she was pregnant. She waited until she was like three months pregnant to tell her mom because she was really, really nervous. But when she told her mom and she was like, mom, you know, I'm pregnant or whatever, her mom was like, oh, that's weird because I'm pregnant too. You guys, her mom was legitimately two months pregnant and she was three months pregnant. So like her baby was going to like be born before her other baby sibling. Does that make sense? So like her and her mom were pregnant at the same time. It, it blew my mind. So like when we would go and see Will and Sandra, like I saw her mom and like they were both pregnant at the same time. They were both having cravings at the same time. Like they were both going through pregnancy at the same time and it blew my mind to pieces. And I was like, oh my God. In a weird way, her mom being pregnant at the same time as her like really helped her and she felt like she had a lot of support, right? Right after they had both given birth, they moved to another house. But it was still in the same neighborhood and it was like four or five blocks away. It was just a little bit further. And so she had had the baby. I want to say the baby was probably like three or four months old and she had invited me over, just me, to come see the baby and she was babysitting her baby sister as well. So she was like, I need help, like can you please come over and just hang out and like help me with the kids? And I was like, yeah, of course. So I had gone over there, right? And I was seeing her be a mom for the first time and like, you know, her doing tummy time with the baby or whatever. And she and I started getting pretty close, right? She dropped out of our high school and she was finishing her high school online. So she was getting the rest of her credits and doing everything online so that she could be home with her son, right? So she wasn't going to school anymore or anything. So the only time that I saw her was when I would go to her house. And she started texting me a whole lot more 
after she had the baby, she lost a lot of her friends because, you know, her other friends didn't have kids and, like, they didn't want to hang out with her and, like, whatever. And so she called me a lot. And so I would go over there and help her, right? But one day came around and she's like, I just want to, like, go somewhere. Like, I'm so bored. I'm so tired of being home all the time by myself with the baby. And so we had made the decision to start venturing out with the baby. One day we decided to go to the mall together. And, you know, as per usual, neither one of us had a car. And so we had to plan this and get the stroller, get the baby, get him all packed up, get his diaper bag and everything, and walk over to the bus stop, get on the bus, and then we wanted to go to the mall, right? So the minute that we get to the mall, she tells me that she needs to go to the bathroom. The minute that we get into the bathroom, she beelines it to the stall, and she was like, I have to pee so bad. So she goes into the stall and she shuts the door and then out of nowhere she was like, Nikki, can you do me a favor please? She was like, would you mind changing the baby for me? And like, I had changed him before. So I was like, yeah, of course. So, you know, I go to the little diaper changing station and like, you know, I had done this a few times and <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I grab her diaper bag out of the stroller and I put it next to me on the little counter and I set him down and I started undressing him and getting ready to like change his diaper, right? So I had opened up her diaper bag and I'm like grabbing everything out of there, the wipes and the diapers and the powder and stuff or whatever. And then I found something really weird and it was like a whole stack of envelopes and it had a rubber band around them and it was like letters. And I saw that they were addressed to Sandra, but like it was seriously none of my business. And you guys, it was like one of those things where like I saw it and it was like in the way of something that I needed in her diaper bag. And I grabbed it and just put it on the side and then like kept going through her bag to get what I needed to change the baby. The stack of envelopes was sitting on the counter next to the diaper bag, right? And so I start changing the baby. Sandra comes out of the bathroom stall. She goes to wash her hands. She looks in the mirror and she sees that I'm changing the baby or whatever and she comes over and I can just feel that she was like super super tense and I was like what the fuck what just happened and I started like packing up the diaper bag and she's like no 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 I got it and I was like okay so like you know I put the baby back in the stroller and she's like acting super weird and she was like so and so she packs up the diaper bag and she like you know puts it on her shoulder like you know where do you want to go first like which store do you want to go to and she was like um, and she just kind of sat there and she was like, you don't want to talk about it? And I was like, talk about what? And she was like, about what you just found. And I was like, I was like so confused. And I was like, what, what do you, what do you mean? And she was like, all of the letters. And I was like, oh, and I was like, girl, I didn't even like really see them. I was like, I just put them off to the side. Why? And she goes, well, she was like, um, I figure I might as well just talk to you about it now. And I was like what and so she was like let's just go sit down and she's like i just i have to tell you and i was like okay she was like but you have to promise not to tell anybody like at all and i was like okay and so we go out and like right outside of the bathrooms there was like this bench in the hallway right so we go out there we sit on the bench and she pulled out the letters again sandra you don't have to tell me anything i was like because i didn't look at those letters like you know, I didn't really want to be involved in something like, it's your business, girl, it's your business. Like, I really didn't look at those letters. And so I was like trying to tell her, I was like, what, if you don't want to tell me, like, you don't have to. And she's like, no, I, I want to tell you. She said, because I kind of have to, that's why we're here. And I was so confused and I was like, wait, what? And I was like, aren't we just here to chill? And she was like, no, not really. She was like, um, she was like, just hear me out. And I was like, okay. Y'all need to grab y'all's tea and y'all's wine, okay? Before I met Will, she was like, I was literally in middle school. She was like, and I had a guy that I was talking to that was in high school at the time. And like, I'm just sitting there like trying not to be judgy. You know what I'm saying? You know when your friend starts telling you some crazy shit and you're like, what the fuck? Like, what? Like you were doing what? Okay, but don't judge. Don't judge. Don't be judgy. You know, you don't want to be that judgy friend. Okay, keep your facial expressions controlled, Nikki. He was like, so I had this boyfriend and he was very troubled and he came from a really tough background, but like he and I had this connection that like I'd never felt before and he was my first. And I was like, what? Like you guys, this entire time because of how long she had been with Will, I thought and I just assumed that she, he was her first, but he was not. So she starts telling me about this guy, right? And we'll name him Michael. 
and so she was like yeah you know Michael was like my first love and he was like really troubled but he made me feel special and beautiful and like he was my first and he and I had this amazing connection or whatever right well he started getting into trouble for like petty theft and like he started getting suspended at school and like getting in trouble um, she was like he used to steal cars and like you know she, she was like he started getting in a lot of trouble and he ended up going to jail I forgot what he did I want to say that he like robbed a place like he like went in and like tried to rob a place he got caught and he went to jail for like a good three four years I've been in jail you guys for all this time so I was like what and she was like yeah so you know I haven't seen him in years I hadn't heard from him in about two years she was like and I never forgot about him and I never stopped having feelings for him but I just never thought that I would ever hear from him ever again right and I was like yeah and she goes so in the meantime, I ended up getting with Will and I just thought like there was no way for Michael and I to ever be together because he was in jail. But then one of my friends on Facebook reached out to me and said that he had gotten a hold of her asking for my address because he wanted to start writing me. She was like, and at this point, Will and I had already been together for two years, but like this was like the love of my life and I never thought that I would ever, ever hear from him ever again. So I gave her my address. She goes, and then he and I started writing to each other. He writes me the sweetest letters, and I just miss him so much. She was like, so he and I have been writing each other for almost three years now. What? I was like, okay, okay, like this is okay. No, everything's fine. It's okay. Like I'm not being judgy. It's okay. You guys, so she admitted to me, you know, like the car seats, they have like the cover on them. She like used to hide the letters behind that cover of the car seat so that Will wouldn't find it because like Will basically lived with her at this point like they were always around each other she was like so I couldn't keep the letters in the house like I didn't want him to find it and so like I had to get really creative with where I, I kept the letters so I started hiding them in the baby stuff but um she goes today is like a super special day though and I was like why and she goes because he just got out of jail and I was like I'm sorry what and she was like yeah and he's meeting me here today and like I haven't seen him in so many years you guys my heart stopped and I was like wait a minute I was like he's coming here like today like right now and she was like yeah she was like that's why I really wanted to come here hold up so like I went from being like super understanding and like this is you boo and like I'm not trying to judge you or whatever but like then I got really irritated and I was like hold up hold up up Sandra I was like you're telling me that you got me in the middle of like your little love triangle and you got me here under false pretenses because you're meeting with your ex-boyfriend and I'm here with your baby with your current boyfriend who's one of my boyfriend's best friends and she was like she was like please don't freak out please don't freak out and I was like what the hell am I supposed to do Sandra I was like I don't want to be in the middle of this like I don't want to know about this I was like please don't tell me anything else and she was like Nikki you're like the only person that's like stuck with me since I had the baby and like I just really need a friend and I was like dude like girl I get that but like you have to understand that I have my own relationship and if Robert finds out that I've known about this and that I know about this other dude and like I'm helping you see him and like this is his friend's like baby mom. I was like this is so much mess Sandra like why would you not ask me like why would you put me in the middle of this and she was like please don't get mad she was like look I just she's like I just want to ask you she's like you don't even have to see him you don't have to be around him you don't even have to talk to him she was like just take the baby and like go like to stores or whatever I will meet him in the food court and I'll text you when I'm done she was like that way if Will asks you or Robert asks you like you can say that you didn't know or like you knew and like you were just trying to help me out she's like P place the blame all on me I don't care she was like I don't want him to meet my son yet and I obviously you know you're uncomfortable she was like if you're uncomfortable with it you don't have to meet him either and I was like I don't want to meet him I don't want to meet him because I want to be involved Sandra I just want some closure and I just want to say bye pretty much she was like you know I have my baby I have my relationship Relationship. I know that I can't be with him anymore I just want that closure that I never got and I was like oh my god I was like this is a bad idea this is such a bad idea but like, look Nikki I've never asked you for anything I'm just asking for this one favor just please and I was she was like I really really need this so that I can move on oh it was such a softy back then like I, I was just I had such a soft heart for like 
I don't know like I just could not like see one of my friends begging me like that so like I was like oh my god bitch like I can't I was so mad at her for putting me in the middle of it but like what's done is done and like now you have your baby here and like you're begging me to like let you have closure or whatever so I was like look Sandra I was like I will take the baby but like for 20 minutes I said I'm not gonna be here all day while you're like gallivanting with your ex I said, because this could really affect my relationship too. I said, I'm not trying to get dragged into this, please. I was like, so do what you need to do. And then that needs to be the end of it. I said, whatever you do with Michael going forward, I want nothing to do with this. Do not ever do this to me again. And she was like, okay, I promise. And she like hugged me. She's like, thank you so, so much. She was like, this is the only, the one and only time I would ever ask this of you. And I was like, okay, whatever. And like, I was so mad. And I was like, get off me. Like, I'm not trying to like hug this shit out. Like, I'm so irritated with you right now. Like, I cannot believe you just did this to me. And so, you know, I get up and I'm like, hurry up and deal with your mess, Sandra. I was like, because I'm, I'm going to want to leave. I'm going to text you in exactly 20 minutes from now. And then we are leaving because I, I don't want any part of this and she was like okay first of all I had no experience taking care of children because I was the baby of my family I'm my brother's little sister like I was the youngest cousin I was not like I was not the person to like be taking care of kids because like there were just no babies in my family after me and I had probably changed like I had a baby cousin and I changed his diaper like twice my point is is that I didn't know what the hell I was doing and I was alone with her son and I didn't know how to take care of a baby so like he starts crying you guys and he's like getting red in the face and like I'm in the middle of like this clothing store and I'm like trying to get him out of his stroller and you know like you know trying to calm him down and I I was like are you hungry and she had like bottles or whatever so I was like trying to feed him he didn't want it and like I had already changed his diaper and like you guys I was freaking out so I start texting her and I was like he's upset and like I think he just wants his mom like you need to hurry up and she didn't text me back right so I'm just sitting there and I'm like oh my god you guys this child it starts screaming bloody murder in the middle of the freaking store and I'm just like fumbling and like I'm dropping the diaper bag and I'm trying to text her and I don't know where you guys this angel of a lady <laughs> she came up to me she was probably like in her 30s and she came up and she started talking to the baby and she was like oh it's okay and she was like he's probably just a little fussy she was like has he already been changed and I was like yeah and, you know I'm like you know freaking out and I was like it's not my I was like he's not my son I was like he belongs to my friend I'm just watching him for a little bit and she goes oh, okay and she goes you know sometimes they just get a little fussy when they're like around bright lights and a lot of people um, she goes why don't we go sit down on a bench and so she came with me this stranger of a lady and we go sit down and she was like may I and so she like asked to see the baby and I was like yeah you know like I don't know what the hell to do so like I hand the baby over to her and she just starts rocking him and just like talking to him and he calms down he starts calming down and she was like he's being fussy because he needs a nap and I was like oh okay she was like you need to go to a quiet location she was like I'm gonna put him in a stroller she's like just go somewhere quiet and kind of rock him around in the stroller he should be fine you're doing great and I was like okay and like she got him to stop crying and I was like thank you so much like I was I did not know what I was doing she's like no it's okay you're gonna do fine she was like it's fine she's like but soon he's gonna be hungry she's like after his nap he's most likely gonna be hungry and I was like okay once I start seeing that he's falling asleep I sit down on a bench and like I face him towards me so I can see him and he's like knocked out and so I start calling Sandra and I was like we need to go now like I'm not about to be here for like when he gets up he's gonna be hungry he's gonna be screaming and he's he, I'm not his mom and he can tell like he wants his mom and so I start calling Sandra no answer I start texting her no answer and I was like no this bitch is not just leaving me here with her son and not answering her goddamn phone so I was like you know what fine so I was like she wants to play this game I'm not about this life you know the food court was pretty loud you just hear people talking and like getting their food or whatever and so the minute we walk in there like people are being so loud and the baby wakes up and he starts 
crying again. And then his cries start turning into screams because he's like tired and now he's getting fussy and he's hungry or whatever. And I was like, I'm not doing this. Like I'm not about this life. So here I am, you guys. I'm like literally just rolling up into the food court with this screaming child and I don't care. I start walking up on her and she's sitting with this guy. He's like fully tatted out. He's like bald. He ain't got no hair. I start walking up and they both hear the baby screaming and she like turns around and he, Michael just kind of looks at me all confused and I was like, Sandra and so I start yelling at her across the room because I was so mad like how are you gonna do me like that girl like I'm over here trying to do you a favor but like you still need to be available if I have questions about your kid you don't just get to drop off your kid with me so like I was so mad and she gets up and she was like Nikki she was like what what is happening and I was like I don't know and it's not my problem to figure out Sandra I was like you take care of your kid I'm leaving and that dude Michael was like your kid and like he like looked so confused and he looked at Sandra and he was like what 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 does she mean your kid Nikki she was like why are you doing this I said because I said I just I don't want to be a part of this Sandra I was like I really don't I was like you didn't even tell me that like this was gonna happen I was like I need to go I was like I don't know how to deal with this I don't know how to deal with the baby I was like I'm sorry I tried to help you out girl but I gotta go I just hear him and he was like you didn't tell me that you had a kid and she was like I was getting to it and he was like what do you mean you were getting to it so like they started fighting you guys it was such a mess it was like such a ratchet ass mess like, you told me that you weren't with anybody while I was in jail and she, she was like well she's like I didn't want you to get mad and of course I was with somebody I was lonely like you got locked up or whatever and so they start fighting and I was like Bitch, peace out like I'm not here for it and like everyone in the food court was like staring and they were like oh shit and so he stands up you guys and he was like Sandra you lied to me like all this time I thought like you were you know my ride or die and I thought that you had like stayed single for me and you didn't like you have a baby now like what the fuck and like you guys he stood up and this dude was like six foot four okay I pieced out I pieced out so fast I left the mall I went across the street to the parking ride I got on the bus and I went home I didn't even go to Robert's I didn't go back to her house nothing I went home it was like one of the biggest wingman moments I had ever had in my life but I just felt so guilty about it I felt so guilty about like guarding and protecting my friend and not telling the truth that but like I just felt like this truth could like who ruined their entire family dynamic and like the minute that I saw the baby I was like it's not my place it's just it's just not my place like I I know that this is happening but like I don't know if it's my place to say anything so um I just I left it be and it was just too big of a secret for me to like be around them and try to keep and like I just I don't know like I just I clammed up and I left and like I just let them handle their own shit. I don't know if the truth ever came out. I don't know if Sandra ended up with Michael. I don't know if Michael ever showed his face. I don't, I have no idea what happened, but that is one of the biggest secrets that I had ever kept for my friend. And like, I was like put in the middle of it and I just felt like it was such a big like secret to keep from her baby dad. I was used to like my girls being done wrong by their dudes, not the other way around. So like, I just didn't know how to handle this situation but yeah that was that is a story about like one of one of the biggest secrets that I ever kept for my friend and like I still feel bad about it to this day like I don't know if I made the right decision on one hand I should have told because I didn't feel like Will deserved that but then on the other hand I didn't want to tell because there was like a baby in the middle of it and like my what I knew would affect his life and his parents so like I don't know but that was like one of the biggest secrets that I had ever kept for one of my friends and like one of the biggest times that I was like playing wingman for her for real so that is a story about the time that I knew about my friends like side dude and like her side piece and I didn't say anything so I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below if you've ever been in this situation where like you know that your girl is not in the right and like you just like what the hell do you do and you're just like 
I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut or like whatever let me know your stories and you know your situations down below thank you guys so much for chilling with me and coming to hang out with me and turn it up on Thursdays with me for story time I love you guys I hope you guys enjoyed yourself if you did even just a little bit don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up also if you're not subscribed to my channel please do so we are going to be having story times every Thursday turning up on Thursdays and reverting back to OG Nikki and the OG schedule so I hope you guys are ready also don't forget to hit that notification bell I don't want you guys to miss out on any videos and um, we've been having like some issues with like subscriptions and stuff like that so definitely hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next story time in the next video I love you guys and I will see you guys very soon here on my channel with some new videos and some new content I'm so excited I love you guys and I will see you guys very soon in my next video peace out